Hello, good afternoon. It's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the uh, uh, European market close on the uh, 23rd of uh, Tuesday, the uh, February 2016. Okay, so let's uh, try and sum up exactly what's happened here with this late sell off into the cold close based on Mr. Ali Al Naimi's uh, comments with regards to oil. And uh, we'll certainly disclose and explain how we how, how European markets basically reacted. To Mr. Carney's comments as well, and also uh, the economic data that came out throughout the day. Okay, so be sure to visit CFDs.com for your trading needs. Be sure to take advantage of that potential offer on of a very generous offer that's on at present of 25% on your initial deposits. Alternatively, you can visit the educational site w.cfds.education to certainly learn more. Okay, so in terms of uh, market close, let's give you the uh, rundown. The FTSE is down by 1.3%. Majority of that, obviously, in the last uh, in the last uh, closing minutes, uh, was the uh, exacerbation in the sell-off. Uh, the DAX and the CAC down both uh, by almost around 1.6 to 1.4 percent. So, all in all, a risk aversion trade. Now, I did explain during the day that you are going to see resistance due to the fact that the euro USD is into its uh, into its support, as you can see in the daily chart, we're into that Fib 61 percent previous resistance equals support. Hence the reason why the markets will be into risk aversion mode regardless. 60 minute chart obviously held that potential double bottom there at 1.1. And we've certainly pushed higher and that's obviously caused European markets to sell off quite substantially. Now even the extent of the sell off, even I certainly um, I didn't take into consideration. I was short the uh, the Euro stocks and I was short the Nasdaq as well. Uh, I didn't expect the, uh, the gap to close that quickly. So certainly uh, very impressive uh, to do given the extent of the uh, sell-off in the markets okay right uh, now in terms of understanding exactly what's happened from a chronological perspective let's try and work this out or try and explain and elaborate as we know german gdp more or less came in line but other components within that gdp were certainly weak i.e exports were certainly weaker as uh, and uh, government spending certainly weaker so that obviously uh, provided a negative slant or tilt on sentiment. The IFO data as well certainly came in weaker, although current assessment with business climate expectations both came in weak. And now uh, we also had the Red Book number that came in slightly better than expected on a year on year but monthly basis, slightly better as well. Uh, we had the SP case Schiller uh, as well, existing home sales slightly coming out in the better on the better side of the equation. Uh, now the consumer confidence number certainly came out weaker and Richmond Fed number certainly came out weaker as well okay and that certainly could triggered off uh, or increase the uh, the risk aversion trade okay we all we already had risk aversion given the fact that the chinese renminbi was marked down overnight uh, if i bring up the renminbi itself you'll see that the uh, renminbi potentially topping out here certainly is a warning sign if i just bring up the chinese renminbi as you can see here in the daily chart certainly after that topping tail it certainly hasn't moved higher and as we all know renminbi down stock market sell off okay uh, and that generally is the equation in this market at present okay now uh, the yen as well yen is quite an important factor here now the uh, all, all eyes on the double top on the yen now the reason why i'm concerned about the yen is that uh, uh, or should we say triple top now is because of the comments overnight from mr corroda uh, weren't exactly overtly bullish um, so again that certainly remains a concern now bear with me one second i want to just close a particular trade uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, bear with me. Okay, so just close the last that long position, getting out of here, just trying to reduce risk due to the um, uh, unexpected or uh, unanticipated potential. Well, quite a substantial, a substantial slide on the uh, the actual uh, on the actual uh, FTSE 100. Uh, okay, interesting scenario. Interesting scenario. Okay, okay. 
Right, okay, this certainly is interesting. Okay, so, okay, going back to the yen. Okay, the yen, Mr. Corolla's comments, he basically lacked faith in his, in his uh, ability to potentially uh, control uh, inflation and force it higher. And there were other comments as well, if I can recollect correctly. Uh, here we go. Um, now by uh, Mr. Schrossberg. Now this is quite an important um, uh, insight into the BOJ. It's been a volatile night of trade in Asia where you, the yen briefly dipped below the 112 leave region. Now we're currently trading as we speak. We're currently in the 112.2 region now. 115 was initially, according to Cathy Lee, and the zone where the BOJ would have to be forced to intervene. And that certainly isn't the case anymore. So it certainly isn't looking well or looking good at present. Okay, so Mr. Nate, so basic dip below the 112 after traders reacted negative to BOJ Corroda's testimony in Parliament. Mr. Corroda appeared to back away from his earlier comments regarding the efficacy of QE spooking markets as he talked. So, i.e., he lacks confidence with regards to his ability. Okay, uh, now USD dropped to a uh, pivot low 1.111.85. We're not too far off there, currently at 112.2. In what some market participants took to be a quick dose of intervention by the BOJ, so it quickly rolls back up to 112.6. Japanese policymakers are clearly frustrated by market action in the foreign exchange. The negative rate gambit has failed spectacularly, as we already know, given the 1,000 point drop on the USD JPY. So that itself is 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 a, is a, is, a, is a warning sign. Okay, whenever the USD JPY starts to fall, that certainly is a risk of trade. So bear that in mind. Okay. Now bear with me one second whilst I just open up another trade. Bear with me. Okay, folks. Okay, back to the yen then. So just to clarify with regards to the yen, uh, the yen is at a triple top resistance. Any further move higher will certainly create global panic, global risk aversion, especially with Mr. Ali Naimi's comments now with regards to uh, dashing all hopes of a potential uh, cut in uh, production and stating that the, the markets will decide on which way the which way the uh, price of oil will go certainly is a very bearish uh, perspective on the uh, the oil market and certainly doesn't bode well going forward okay so again uh, that will obviously cause individuals to liquidate uh, and certain companies to liquidate shale producers as we already know i mean this is the uh, the message saudi arabia oil minister message to high cost producers read us shale canada deep water you can lower costs borrow or liquidate okay so lower cost borrow or liquidate they are not going to cut production so as we all know this market has been absolutely um, obsessed with the price of oil and uh, as we all know that causes several uh, sovereign wealth funds to sell and that forces the equity markets lower as well so it's a real conundrum at present and that obviously will create risk aversion i.e the yen as we can see here triple top and uh, given the fact that the boj certainly has failed and lost confidence etc we all know what the the market will do okay so the aussie and kiwi have been rallying as of late due to the price of oil obviously uh, moving higher on the fact that it's going to uh, have a potential freeze uh, in the uh, out production uh, and obviously iranians have, have laughed that off as well okay now a canadian finance minister couldn't cutting spending now would probably lead to a recession now they're they're in a lot of trouble themselves because oil prices obviously have skidded lower and uh, that you know in and of itself has triggered a uh, risk aversion so it's interesting uh, this is why oil prices are, the markets are absolutely intertwined and so sensitive to the price of oil and that dictates the actual uh, uh, risk on and risk off in the market now you can see with the regards to the s p 500 we held that resistance here at 1947 and that's obviously triggered risk aversion or a sell-off in uh, the, the european markets now we have the unfilled gap left below and that certainly seems in in inevitable now on the U.S. market. So again, that's certainly something to uh, to focus upon. Okay, now we have the chart of uh, the Nasdaq as well. Nasdaq with regards to Fitbit shares, etc. That certainly created a, a risk off a tone, etc. And you can see that we are now on the verge of closing that gap as well at uh, forty one sixty four on the the Nasdaq two. So again, that certainly is uh, is a potential bearish tone as well, especially with regards to German DAX itself okay so in terms of uh, economic news flow uh, we have uh, weaker german data overall uh, we have weaker us data overall although existing home sales was certainly was the uh, the uh, shining light even though consumer confidence rich from fed uh, uh, now existing home sales generally is a leader as opposed to a laggard so that certainly is some so certainly provides some solace although having said that mr carney was relatively dovish and upbeat 
in his uh, in his tone as well and his rhetoric uh, and uh, now that that may well play an important factor as well with regards to this market so it's going to be interesting to see how this uh, market reacts and uh, the next potential movement in this uh, stock market so all eyes on the uh, the FTSE 100 because that will dictate and that will help this market move whichever direction now we have Brexit concerns we have oil concerns now in Mr Ali Naimi's speech as well so there's a lot of variables flowing in this market now let's look at the uh, technical uh, picture now in terms of the uh, the market itself let's bring up the uh, euro stocks as of uh, first and foremost let's see exactly where that's from this market is positioned now the euro stock certainly on the 10 minute chart you can see here uh, let me just bring up the eu market sorry um I'll bring up the european euro stocks itself let's just bring up the euro stocks okay here we are okay so euro stocks on the 10 minute chart certainly remains bearish the uh, unfilled gap below at 2870 I did expect the pivot to, to, to hold at 2800, well, 2900, that's the 200MA, and that certainly hasn't been the case. Now, I underestimate Mr. Ali Al Naimi's uh, potential uh, effect on the market, and this certainly has sold off quite substantially. Now, I've actually gone short the FTSE as a potential hedge to my existing long positions, which certainly should remain vulnerable. Okay, so all eyes on this uh, potential gap fill below. 60 minute chart, the euro stocks, I did expect that 200MA to potentially hold and cause. Uh, the euro stocks certainly start rallying, but taking into account the sell-off and the sharp sell-off in oil, uh, with Mr. Ali Al Naimi's comments, that was certainly underestimated to a large extent. Okay, now the focus remains on the um, the next potential uh, uh, movement is the uh, next potential candidate is the CAC. Let's just bring, oh, why do I keep doing this? Bear with me one second. Let's just bring up the CAC. Uh, go to euro stocks. Bring up the CAC. Okay, let's see exactly where we are with regards to the CAC. Okay, so the CAC itself certainly has held that resistance. Uh, let's bring up the CAC, bear with me. Here we go. Okay, the French CAC, you have the unfilled gap below at 4220. That certainly remains a zone that will be targeted. 60 minute chart, again, gap fill support. And then we do have the uh, 200 MA just below. 4190 certainly remains support on the French CAC. Daily chart, uh, the 75% certainly has held as resistance. And uh, the unfilled gap below still remains at 4000. So it'll be interesting to see how the markets react to the, the price of oil. If oil keeps sliding, then obviously we all know which way this market is headed. Okay, now in terms of the German DAX, let's bring up the German DAX as well. Let's see exactly where the uh, the leader in Europe is positioned. The German DAXs have gap fill support at 9390, so that certainly needs to be taken into consideration. The current price on the German DAX, as we speak, is uh, currently settling or trading at the 9430 zone, so slightly higher. And bear in mind that we do have gap fill at 9390, so again, that's certainly a zone to uh, certainly be interested in. Now the 60 minute chart, the German DAX will certainly show that 200 MA certainly is into support and 9390 will certainly be a support zone. The daily chart of the uh, German DAX again has held that 75% resistance, certainly remains weak. So this 75% resistance really is the bull bear zone and all eyes on that bull bear zone, okay, with regards to the next potential direction in this marketplace, okay. Now FTSE 100, again, uh, the bull flag certainly has faltered here and wavered. Now we did have Mr. Carney certainly being uh, dovish and that certainly is a potential bullish signal uh, but having said that we have Brexit on the other side and obviously this oil price slide now on the other side as well. So it certainly is Brexit plus oil sell off versus Mr. Carney's dovish rhetoric. Now I think he was uh, certainly forced to do that to a large extent and it certainly does question his ability to raise rates now going forward. So. He certainly discount, well, certainly neglected and um, uh, rejected outright claims of uh, of negative rates. Although he was certainly uh, dovish in his rhetoric, talking about QE and potential rate cuts going forward, if the uh, situation on the horizon certainly became worse in terms of uh, economic fundamentals. Okay, so again, FTSE 100 diagonal trend line resistance is uh, is key at that 6030 zone and again it's all about oil okay i did explain in my chart during the day that an expanding rising wedge pattern is certainly bearish and certainly indicates exhaustion and a reversal so certainly take that 
uh, on board as well okay and the 10 minute chart let's just zoom in for you unfilled gap remains below at 5940 given this oil price sell off it certainly it is vulnerable to being closed now the pivot low that i think we've seen so far is at 5952 so not not too far off but that gap fill certainly needs to close before we can mount any uh, even attempt to discuss a rally in this market so again that certainly will be uh, instrumental and, and pivotal okay in the next potential move in this marketplace okay i think that's a market wrap be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs and i wish you the best bear in mind those gaps below once those gaps are filled uh, and oil can potentially make a base then we will need to reassess the next potential move in this market goodbye now